You know, I would like to um, spend a little more time on ways in which uh, people can invite the unconscious to manifest. Uh, it can come through, you know, a, a real disturbance, a stuckness, a life decision that's emotionally anguishing. And it can come through some kind, uh, kind of an epiphany, uh, a dream image, or uh, some such thing. And uh, what I particularly like about what Jung wrote is that we can invite a new situation. We can invite a symbol uh, by going into an issue or an image consciously. There's no guarantee we're not commanding the unconscious, thou shalt show up. But we can at least open ourselves to the unconscious through through art, through a meditative walk, uh, through some specific kinds of journaling, uh, even going to sleep at night and asking for a dream and having something to write it down with. Uh, so consciousness can play a leading role of kind of opening the door, if you will, and what I love that Jung said about this is it is a way of attaining liberation by one's own efforts of finding the courage to be oneself. So we don't just have to sort of sit and wait and hope. Uh, we, we can invite the unconscious to dialogue, to play, to have a discussion, confrontation, maybe even a little arm wrestling. And this is so central to the development of consciousness that the creative tension and the dance between our known personality and this mysterious unconscious realm is what causes us to grow and, for me, why it is tragic that cognitive behavioral therapy and other modern therapies devalue or refuse to honor that unconscious dimension. Yeah. That the ego on its own, no matter how clever it is, cannot achieve that fecund state that the unconscious can provide. That's such a good point, Joseph, because some of these other therapies that don't take into account the unconscious really are just aiming to sort of shore up conscious functioning and perhaps even making it more difficult to get that input from the unconscious. I'm really glad you brought that up. And Jung is very clear. Uh, at one point he says, you know, in most cases, you know, analysis of uh, consciousness is not enough. And in order to have a new attitude and be in a new psychic uh, situation, the unconscious does have to be engaged and uh, a new relationship to the issue that holds both unconscious and conscious perspectives has to be achieved. You know, I wish in a way it weren't so. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if we could just engage in problem solving and uh, creative solutions and so on? But uh, as Jungians, we know through our own experience and through work with clients and so many other things that uh, this is just psychic fact that the unconscious has to have its say. And that as we pluck up the courage to tend to the unconscious, it doesn't mean we tacitly agree with it, but that we're just willing to have a conversation. One of the hopeful things for me is that regardless of whether or not we believe there is an unconscious, every night the most rational people in the world still have dreams. And they're sitting there, over the kitchen table, you know, having their egg sandwich, talking about how they, you know, were saw a dragon last night or laughed about, you know, their boss wearing a funny hat in a dream. And at least acknowledging the images and feelings of a dream 
allows the unconscious to slowly introduce something, at least on a feeling level. Now, if we go into the dream really trying to unpack the mystery of it, more of the unconscious wisdom can become available. 